How are you going? Cats are a massive problem in Australia. There are 20 million of them, and between them, they manage to kill the population of Hawaii every single day in, in, in native animals. Over time, my yard has kind of become a paradise for animals in the area. I have kookaburras, eastern water skinks, Perian tree frogs, magpies, lorikeets, possums, bush turkeys, house lizards, and this spider I kind of have a crush on. I love you. So it was inevitable that over time, word was going to get out that my yard is a smorgasbord of tasty Australian animals, and some hungry predators were going to show up. At first, I didn't know who was killing animals in my yard. I would just find a lizard tail here and a clump of feathers there. But then I saw this boy. You know, I like to think of myself as Noah and my yard as the ark. And I try to keep animals in good ratios. But since the cats came around and animals have started to go missing, everything is out of whack. I have a frog that is so lonely, he keeps trying to drown himself in my pool. And then these kookaburras that used to be two happy separate couples have now become a polygamous threesome. And I don't want to have to explain what polygamy is to my younger siblings. So I decided to create a robot that deters cats from coming into my yard. Now don't get me wrong, I like cats. I think they are beautiful animals and I feel a bit bad for wetting and scaring them. So let me try to explain why I feel that this is the appropriate thing to do with the help of Tizu and shamelessly attempt to get more views. Cats were first brought into the Australian meta as a support class for humans back in the 1788 colonization patch. Cats have since moved away from their original human bosses and now inhabit the Australian bush. Their ambush rogue playstyle is perfectly suited to deal with the native Australian builds, and as a result, cats became OP very quickly after being added to the server, completely reshaping the Australian meta. They are estimated to kill at least 16 native players a night, and as a whole kill billions of native players every year. They've also been responsible for removing at least 28 native mammal classes from the Australian meta forever, and also spread diseases which massively nerf the various native animal classes. Thanks, TZ. That was almost like you were here. So, in some areas of Australia, this cat problem has gotten so out of control that people shoot, poison, and trap cats in an attempt to stop native populations from being wiped out. So when I squirt the cats in the face to stop them from being dickheads, I'm actually doing them a favor, and they are lucky that I'm not some bogan from South Australia that shoots them and turns them into a stubby holder to sell to tourists. So let's go make this robot. And I have no experience with making robots or coding, but I do have experience with pretending I know how to code and make robots. So I'm going in with a lot of confidence. And that was a lot horrible experience. My hands are too big and the, the wires are too small, but I managed to come up with this. So I have this Arduino board here, which has a motion sensor. When the motion sensor is triggered, the Arduino magically tells the relay switch to complete the circuit, telling this camera to take photos. And at the same time, it tells this servo to move down, acting as a switch and letting water flow through the solenoid valve, squirting water at whoever triggered the Arduino. Now I place the whole thing inside yogurt containers as my family eats a lot of yogurt. But if you do this, it is extremely important you take the yogurt out of the container first. Now I've noticed that the cats usually stick to the perimeter of my yard, so I decided that this gate here with a gap would be a good place to put the motion sensing squirter robot. So let's turn on the water and test out this trap using one of my Patreons. Thank you, Chloe Mo, for your sacrifice. And that worked great. My feet are nice and cold and I also thought a good way of guaranteeing that the cats would enter here would be by placing some bait. So I started to do some research into cat bait and I found this interesting story. During a budget review of Australian National Parks, National Park staff got in trouble for spending hundreds of dollars on KFC using company credit cards. And staff members were almost fired. But then it turns out that KFC, as it is extremely greasy and strongly aromatic, is really good at attracting feral cats, and staff members were actually using it as finger-licking good bait to put inside their cat traps. Now, I'm not sure if this is true or it's just a smart excuse from hungry National Park staff, but I thought using KFC would be a good place to start. 
So let's leave the chicken in the trap there and see what happens. And after a while, checked back and the chicken is gone and the ground is wet, so it's a good sign. So let's go review the footage. And it turns out the only thing we attracted was Graham, a staff member from New South Wales National Parks. But no, this is what actually happened. I stopped checking on the device at around 10 o'clock at night and then went to sleep. I was abruptly woken up with constant ringing of my home phone at around 3am. When I answered the phone, it was my concerned neighbour who had woken up because of a loud noise that they suspected was a gas leak. They looked outside their window and saw constant flashing, which they thought was sparks. My neighbours then became extremely scared that we had a gas leak and there was an electrical problem and they thought their families and mine were in danger of being killed in a gas explosion. So they were desperately trying to call us to tell us to get out of the house. But then I quickly explained to them that there was no danger and I was just making a device that squirts cats to stop them from eating animals in my yard because I'm sick of having polygamous kookaburras. And when they heard this, they agreed that polygamous kookaburras are a problem and they felt at ease and then we both went back to sleep. So after checking out my robot in the morning, I think the problem was this mechanical switch moved down and got stuck in the open position, meaning that the water continued to spray and then the camera continued to take pictures, creating a never ending cycle of water and pictures. Made a couple of modifications to the design and the code. And then I also sent the neighbors some earplugs and decided to try some different baits and different locations in my yard. In this location here, I managed to film good old Rattus Rattus munching down on some tuna. And I also managed to capture this ominous shadow, which freaked me out until I realized it was mine. So then I decided to try the first location again, but this time using something no one can resist, good old peanut butter. And in the morning, I could tell it had been triggered and the ground was wet and there was actually a hair stuck to the peanut butter, which is definitely a good sign. So decided to review the footage. And at first the camera was triggered by something, maybe these ants, but the hose didn't go off yet as it only squirts if something blocks the path for 10 seconds. And then this little cute guy showed up. And as you can see, he's pretty wary of the robot and is looking directly at it. And then he disappeared. And then he showed up again, and then he disappeared again. And then he showed up and was feeling quite comfortable and finally decided to go for the bait, triggering the robot to spray the water. Unfortunately, the camera didn't capture the exact moments the cat was sprayed, only the moments before, but it looks as though the water would have hit it directly in the face. And I really, really wish I'd captured the exact moment, but I imagined it would have looked something like this. And this definitely isn't a long-term solution, and I don't think it will prevent cats entirely from coming in my yard, as they can just use another entrance. And this isn't really a method you can use Australia wide. But for the meantime, this robot kind of puts the cats in their place and shows them that my yard ain't a free or you can eat smorgasbord. And they might have to get a bit wet if they want to eat my animals. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that, make sure to subscribe and check out my other stuff.